Hi, I'm Ellis with Level Up RN. In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to obtain a blood pressure using a manual cuff. I'll be using the steps that we've listed on our clinical nursing skills deck. So if you have this deck, you can grab the card and follow along with me. If you don't have the deck, then you can head on over to levelupRN.com to check them out. To take my patient's blood pressure, I want them to be relaxed, have their arms supported with their legs uncrossed. And this is important more when I'm doing it like in a clinic setting or if they're sitting up in a chair, right? I don't want them to just hold their arm out for me like this while I'm taking their blood pressure because then they're kind of straining and tensing these muscles and that's gonna change my results. So I want their arm relaxed and supported. I'm gonna apply the cuff one inch above the brachial artery pretty snugly and I need it on an arm that doesn't have a current IV running, that doesn't have something like a pick line or an AV fistula, or that's on the same side of a mastectomy. Sometimes both arms have something going on and you need to use clinical judgment to decide which arm is appropriate, but you need to just be, be cognizant when you're choosing the arm to use. The method I'm going to demonstrate and that we've included on our cards is kind of a combination of a step one and two. So I'm going to inflate the cuff while palpating the radial artery. Once the radial artery disappears, I'm going to continue to inflate the cuff 30 mmHg, and that's where I'll start my, my countdown when I'm doing my blood pressure. So let's do that together real quick. So I'm gonna put my stethoscope in my ears. I'm gonna palpate my radial artery. I'm going to hold the bulb in my dominant hand, and I'm going to put the bulb in my hands like this, and I'm gonna control the dial with these two fingers. So I'm gonna lock it and pump it up until I can no longer feel the radial artery. All right, so I lose it at about 140, so I need to go 50, 60, 70, and at that point I can release the dial after I place my stethoscope. And what we're listening is for the first sound, which is our systolic blood pressure. And I heard that at 130. And for our diastolic sound, our diastolic blood pressure, which is the absence of sound. So at about 80, I no longer heard sound. So those are the two numbers I would document. So she would be, or he would be 130 over 80. So I'm gonna do that again. I'm gonna do it twice more so that we can listen and watch the dial together. And make sure when you're using your stethoscope that you're holding it fairly snugly against the brachial artery. I like to put my fingers into the stethoscope itself and wrap my thumb around their forearm. And I can do that from any position, right? Because it's allowing this to kind of adhere to their skin. And it helps me because if I hold it without wrapping my thumb, sometimes they wiggle a little bit. And then I'm hearing artifact. I'm hearing kind of like a crunching or crinkling noise on my stethoscope itself. And then it's really hard to differentiate, like, was that their blood pressure? Was that just me moving? Was that something else? And so I want to fairly snugly push that against their arm. So I'm gonna go ahead and take a couple more blood pressures. And this time we'll just use the one-step approach. Well, I'll pump it up and then we'll listen for blood pressures just so we can practice noting when that first sound happens and that absence of sound occurs. All right, so that one, I got 162 over 110. So he's got a little bit of hypertension going on. And then we'll do one more. All right, 
118 over 66. And that's how you take a blood pressure. I invite you to subscribe to our channel and share a link with your classmates and friends in nursing school. If you found value in this video, be sure to hit the like button and leave us a comment and let us know what you found particularly helpful.